hello, and welcome to Kiki's Chat Show. My guest is late. However, we're going to talk about a film which has already been showcased and it's had a premiere in London at the prestigious Curzon Mayfair in September 2023. It was a huge success and there were loads of stars there. I was trying to fiddle and show you bits of it, but I just couldn't get to do that. I'm not very good with this. My person who helps me is not here. However, yeah. Um, Stephanie Boating, who has not arrived yet, is one of those who has been in the film world. And she started, she lives in Britain. She's a Ghanaian British. She then moved to New York and Los Angeles. She's been on, on the film circuit. She's made a few films herself and which is all on YouTube. There are little bits of it. She does short stories, short films, etc. It's on YouTube. And now she has um, collaborated with a gentleman called Kwame Augustine, and they are hosting their West African premiere of their mini series called Johnny. Now, this is going to be, I just got the day, January 11th, 2024, at the Silver Bird Cinema in Accra Mall. Um, I don't know much about Johnny because I want um, Stephanie to come and tell us all about it, but she's having transport problems, so she hasn't got here yet. However, while we're waiting, so many things have happened in London that we can talk about. Whilst people are struggling with mortgages, etc., the only thing you hear in the news is Rwanda. So it looks like Britain is going to pair with Rwanda and very soon Rwandese will be Londoners, vice versa. I don't know. But it's quite interesting the way that we're bonding with Rwanda at the moment. Apart from that, there's not much else I can um, regale you with in, in the news whilst we wait for Stephanie. But if just Stephanie doesn't appear today, I'm still here. We can talk about other things. If there's somebody on here who has comments and wants to discuss something, let me know. I see two people watching me right now. And I'm quite keen to talk about something. So talk to me. Because my brain was all in sync about this film. I really want to know about the film myself. Um, there's nothing more exciting than uh, Ghanaians or Africans doing their own thing. Because I always say that we need to move away from being at the coattails of the western world and we should set up our own things and do it our own way i was watching something on tiktok today and it was talking about the way we there was an architect talking about the way that we build our houses in africa before we were invaded the way that we the materials we used were mud so we mostly lived in mud, ha mud houses. I remember going over to one of the really old settlements of my tribe. We lived on a mountain. My tribe really was on a mountain. They lived and worked on a mountain and most people built story buildings, but it was with mud they would, it, it was, they would hew into the caves and then they would build story buildings. So the mother and father were here, the children had their own little cubby holes and all of that. Now, houses in California are being built in the same sort of um, arrangement. And you kind of wonder that, now who's taking it there? I mean, is it them copying us or what, what's happening? One of the comments I read in the comment section was this older guy, and he lives in New York now, and he said, this is a very interesting show because 
he used to live in a mud hut when he was younger and he was so embarrassed when he he was going to school with his friends or if his friends passed by because they lived in mud huts and his friends lived in beautiful houses now it's really interesting when you think about it that we built our mud huts because that served us we would use mud a bit of water and other things and we would set it up and we used to um redo it every you know before the rainy seasons they never had floods water never entered their rooms and also you know wind and all of that didn't take we in africa the weather that affects us is sand storms rain and heat and the way that the mud huts were built these were suitable for that and yet now we build houses with cement and then we put air condition in it because it's too hot we used to build houses in such a way that there were dome type windows so that things wouldn't enter and yet now we build the square ones we have glass as windows and the sun burns us while we're sitting indoors we do not have we're not comfortable today's show and i i like to you know say it, that today's show is discussing a film preview giving information on johnny a west african film by stephanie boating and kwame augustine they are my guests and they haven't arrived so i am talking about the latest thing i discovered which is in california now architects are trying to build houses to suit the weather and they are using mud and all the materials that we used in Africa all those years ago before they came and changed our minds and made us start building with cement and the cement is not suitable and therefore if you build your house and you have those square windows you put glass in it the sun beats on the glass and it's hot inside so what do you do you put air condition in it and so on and so forth people can comment so that we can have a kind of interactive chat while we're waiting for stephanie again i will give you a small bio of stephanie stephanie is hosting the west african premiere of a mini series called Johnny on January the 11th, 2024 at Silverbird Cinema at the Accra Mall. Now this event, it will showcase an amazing array of short films shot in Ghana by Ghanaians, including the award nominated film Locked In. Now I don't know what that means and I wish Stephanie was here so that we'd ask her, but she's not here yet. They had the London premiere here of Johnny at the prestigious Curzon Mayfair in September 2023. I wish I'd gone. Then I'll be able to tell you things because I, it was my birthday that day. So I was eating seafood. I was otherwise engaged. Therefore, I did not attend and I wish I had. I had an invitation. I would have told you more. I do not have any information. Stephanie is not here. We are experiencing problems. I don't know where she is. So anyway, it would be great if people go to um, Accra Mall and watch the film that is being there the film is called johnny and it's i don't know what it's about but it's supposed to be really good now interestingly stephanie watting and kwame augustine 
would like ah stephanie's here hello i'm so sorry apologies just got held up um with work <laughs> yeah well people stephanie's here here we are and stephanie is here to talk about johnny now stephanie you've lost a lot of time but it's okay you know we're, we're gonna rush through it if that's what you want but stephanie is a filmmaker stephanie boating is a filmmaker she's made a few films short films some of them are on youtube so i suggest if you tap in stephanie boating on youtube you will see some of her films welcome to the show stephanie Thank you for having me. And again, apologies for the delay. It's okay. No problem at all. Now, we'll have a short something about you so that we can talk about Johnny itself. Why filmmaking? Is it something you've wanted to do all the time you were a child or what? Yeah, I, since I was 11, I always uh, I wanted to act. And acting transitioned into me writing the stories that um, I could see myself in because at the time I just didn't see... Uh, you know, shows, TV, films, where I could imagine myself in that role. Um, and when I was about 18, 19, I was in a drama school and I had an agent and I just wasn't booking anything. Um, I wasn't booking any commercials. And I saw that a lot of the description was people just um, Caucasian, um, you know, women, between the age ranges that essentially I didn't fit the boxes. So I started writing short films, writing um, plays, things that I found that I was interested in. And then that kind of opened the door to directing and it just led to me really falling in love with, with directing essentially and just putting things together and seeing like a vision that was just written down, just come to life. And so from there, I just continued sailing in that um, front and just directing and producing a lot of um, short films, music videos, uh, corporate company um, videos as well, and like TV pilots. So, um, so yeah, I was able to really kind of um, hone in on what I really love doing and spend about two years in LA um, basically working I did a master's there etc and just really was able to build up my portfolio of work um, so yeah excellent so you've got a master's in what filmmaking yeah in film and media production wow okay excellent <laughs> now I wanted also to show a little bit so that we gave people a teaser off Johnny if you had it but I'm not managing to put it on screen and you came late so we're just going to box off yeah no worries no yeah no problem at all now um what is the aim and purpose of the event of Johnny first of all do you want to tell us a little bit about Johnny itself because I realized while you I was trying to fill in the time I didn't know anything about it yeah, so Johnny is a mini series um, written and created by Kwame Augustine. Um, and so this project was uh, essentially a baby of his about 10 years ago. He did an original kind of pilot for, for Johnny. Um, and 10 years later, uh, essentially, um, we decided to make it, you know, bigger, better, try and actually put out what he kind of wanted to do um, and more essentially. So he had a play, it was sold out at the time, like about 10 years ago. And so this is like the rebirth of Johnny, which is a mini series, is about um, a black British guy um, living in London and just has so many different traumas from childhood, um, from being fostered by white parents and growing up in London. So it really explores so many like dynamics. It explores the dynamics of um, someone who's Ghanaian growing up in basically a, a Western country. It, it, it talks about the culture as well, like the culture that um, as a lot of diasporas, um, they experience as well. So it, Johnny is quite a colorful character. It is a, a drama and dark comedy. So there's a lot of facets to it. And um, essentially the aim was to just put something out there to kind of demonstrate um, this art piece that um, has now been rebirthed to show the different facets of Johnny and just having, you know, more of the resources to be able to kind of do it on a bigger scale. And so we premiered that at the Curzon Mayfair um, and that was was really, really great. A lot of people came out, a lot of people from the industry. Um, everyone was um, very, very like 
blown back by the door. Yeah, it was it was such yes. an overwhelming experience because um, afterwards we had a little um, after party and just it just so many people came up to just talk about it and say how great it was. Um, there was a few channels there. I know Channel Four was there and a few um, other people. Like there was a Netflix affiliate there, and it was just really great to see a lot of people come together, especially within the Black community, and everyone come together um, for Johnny and to support Kwame and and myself with this project. Uh, it was really lovely to see, and it was such great feedback as well. So we we were like, we we have to continue to showcase this work, um, especially as independent filmmakers. Sometimes it's challenging to be able to, you know, do those things on the scale that you want it to be on. And being able to premiere at the Curse on Mayfair was an amazing experience because it's one of those venues that, you know, you don't get a chance to do it, especially at the stage that we are both at. Uh, most people that use that venue already have big studios, um, already have that kind of establishment. So for this, it was a great statement to just kind of show what we can do um, the level of quality of work that we produce and also how we can continue to engage the market, um, not only in the UK, but also abroad as well. So that's why we said we, we definitely need to take it to Ghana. And at this premiere, we showcased um, several short films as well that myself and Kwame had either directed, produced, written. Um, and so we plan to do that also in Ghana. Um, we have a short film called Locked In that we shot in Ghana. Um, we have people we worked with and we want to just kind of showcase the talent of people that, you know, are part of the African and African diaspora in Ghana. So everything that we're showcasing um, has been shot, written, produced by Ghanaians, essentially. Um, most of the content we're showing would have been shot in Ghana, but Johnny is the, the debut, is the one that hasn't been shot in Ghana in London, but everything else has been shot in Ghana. So. It's just going to be really great to just showcase all of the talented people we have, because I think sometimes we get overlooked um, in terms of what we can do, especially the skills that are on the ground um, in Ghana as well. And so I feel like it's just a great uh, moment to be able to just showcase all of all of that to, to people that want to come and watch. Um, and then, yeah, essentially do another premiere, um, bigger and better in Ghana. Um, so, yeah, that'll be very exciting, essentially. Looking forward so, to it. Is it going to be like um, you know, EastEnders? You because you said it's a mini series. When you say mini series, there are a few series like in America, for example, we, we've been watching Sisters and The Oval yeah. and all of these things which are mini series, but they're kind of you know, so we watch them and we wait for the next installment and that yeah. sort of thing. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, so essentially what we have already is like a short mini series. So it's it's about three to seven minutes long each part, part one, part two, part three. Um, it definitely can be expanded into something like a 20 minute drama, a 20 minute um, dark comedy that you would see as a series, as a TV series. Um, as it stands right now, it's like the mini version of what you would see on TV essentially. So just less, like half the time essentially. So usually they're about 20 minutes long, the comedies. Now this is about like, half the time and we have three parts to it but we definitely want to expand it so we can um, have that platform to, to possibly put it on a streaming platform um, as well as the tv option as well so this is just like a a good intro um, it just kind of shows the world of the character and it just kind of introduces you nicely to um, johnny the project and what we can expect in terms of the characters because um, there's a lot of characters in his world so this was a great way to kind of um, debut it, but also, you know, because we're re using our own resources, we're, we're funding it ourselves, we're putting in money, and a lot of money's already been spent on this. Um, so we, ideally, we can continue to um, build it and have people that support the project that can help kind of invest into the further content we want to create from Johnny and, and uh, all of the other content we create, to be honest, as well. So basically, um, is it international? Is it um, what I'm asking is, is it something that everyone would enjoy, everyone will appreciate, everyone will understand, or is it sort of educative in such a way that these are experiences pertaining to people in Britain and the outside world is going to learn about it? Is it a kind of an educative sort of thing? Yeah, I think, um, so there's a bit of both. I think definitely um, there'll be 
moments where people can watch from wherever they're within the UK, outside the UK, um, and they can watch it and just appreciate um, the, the comedic value, appreciate the drama, appreciate the performance. Um, yeah. And the storyline is, is very um, in line with the UK and experiences over here, um, especially um, for Africans in the diaspora and also just experiences um, every day, essentially, culture. So I think that, yes, it can definitely like educate and definitely bring people in to just kind of see an aspect of, you know, the people there are in the UK. Um, and also, um, at the same time, people might notice it and, and, and see a familiar aspect in it because you can relate to different parts of um, Johnny as a character, but it's just based in London, a Cockney geezer. So it's just one of those um, extreme um, characters, essentially, but it draws you in because of the vulnerabilities he shows uh, throughout the you know, mini series and also just kind of unraveling and learning more about him. And like I have a friend, for example, from the States um, who saw a little preview of it and they were just laughing and they were just like, they asked questions here and there, but more so to do with the culture in Britain and like, oh, there are really black people that speak like that in London, like with a Cockney accent and all this kind of stuff. So it's funny to kind of see um, Johnny in its full entirety because you, you then look at it and see that in the UK, there's a lot that goes on that maybe other people are not really aware of, and it's it's good to bring light on it as well in a you know comedic style, even though there's under underlining um, you know facets to him, but it still kind of brings you into the world. You learn more about it, and then you can have a good time as well as you're watching it and um, laugh along. So, so yeah. Excellent. So, any other projects coming up after the premiere? So for what we're trying to do is we're trying to build um, uh, essentially a base of con a continued base of people who want to support the projects that we're doing. So Kwame, um, as I said, he's a creator, but he's also a writer, producer. Um, myself, I have a slate of about 10 uh, mixtures of film, TV um, concepts. And so at the moment, um, one of the ones I'm working on um, is a feature film, which I'm going to shoot in Ghana um, next year. And so um, currently looking for investment, but I already have a script that is from like two years ago, for example. So there's always content coming out. Kwame has like about three scripts he's written recently um, and over the years as well. Um, two of them are which um, are based in Ghana as well. So um, I think collectively we do have a slate of um, projects, but it's, it's kind of like lighting the torch and going along like what can what is um, what has been asked for now? What can we kind of work on now and what is, you know, people uh, leaning towards um, and then you just kind of circle around so right now um, definitely the feature film um, that I have that I want to shoot in Ghana is definitely there on, on the back bench I also have um, a series that I wrote when I was in Los Angeles that's something that I wrote about five years ago and it's something that I'm just constantly working on constantly trying to see how I can continue to either build it make it you know how it needs to be in order to to progress onto the next level so um, so yes, there's always projects that we're both working on. There's always something in the, um, as you call it, in the, in the pot stirring. And I think it's just about seeing what you know, what time is good to to bring it out essentially. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, there's a lot of things to do in Ghana as well. So it's exciting having, um, you know, content ideas and just seeing that develop. Um, so yeah, is it? that you this is your partner that you're going to be working with all along or you know you're doing johnny now but you will move on because i saw i've seen a few of your uh films your short films i really enjoyed the one at the train station oh. <laughs> I, I i remember asking you this is years ago i don't know if you remember but i did ask you are you going to expand on that because there was a bit of racism there's a bit of all sorts in it and i and i you know are you going to expand on it or the things that you've done is done and you're looking to do new things which are on the back burner yeah so that's a really good question i think what happens is that you have something and then um you know it gets put to the back burner because of you know you're, you're, you're pitching it, you're, you're talking to people to try and expand it and then it just doesn't happen at the time so you leave it on the back burner. So I think for that, definitely there was, um, I wanted to kind of illustrate like a, kind of like a series which just showed different 
um, insights into, um, you know, different people within, um, I guess, the community, um, UK, and how, you know, you can show different microaggressions at work, different discriminations, but in a way which is, is, is still quite light, um, has a little bit of comedic value, but also shows something that's quite important. So that was something I've always, you know, I've had there, and I haven't had a chance to expand on that just yet. Um, but it's something I do want to expand on because I think it's important to kind of tell stories that you don't usually hear. And it also highlight um, impactful messages that I feel, you know, people are short of. So recently um, I directed a short film called Small Chops um, mm -hmm. and the producer that kind of brought me on board, she, she's actually got a whole uh, cast of, of women. So the, the whole crew, the production, everyone was like just women and it was really amazing to kind of put that story together because it has really strong undertones about women and the way we're treated and just kind of like in society so um something like that reminded me of the project you saw so it was good to be involved in that and that that short film is now going through the festival market so it's not released online yet but um that is definitely um you know someone that i'll be working with because there's so many of those stories and you know she's got a group of writers um women writers uh, different uh, places i think the the writer that wrote um the one that we just recently shot she's nigerian for example but she's got so many different um writers from different backgrounds and writing these stories so i think it's important um to get those out there and i definitely want to continue to expand in those ways even if it's a different project um the idea is still there and the essence of you know pushing those kind of um topics that are not already spoken about out there so yeah definitely have you tried um, to speak to the government? Because you see, over here, for example, it's 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 culture. It's you know they view filmmaking and theater. It's the culture of of the country. America is the same. So the government of Ghana itself should get interested in all of these things, and especially if it's international then, um, you know, they could, even if you are independent, they could help you in, it's a suggestion, I'm just thinking as you're speaking. Yeah. No, because Nigeria, Nigeria yeah. brings, they churn out a lot of movies. Movies mm -hmm. are all over the place and they have broken into Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a really great point and I, I you know, I would love there to be some kind of like, you know, fund or some kind of um, way that it could, you know, help not just me and what we're doing, but also, you know, all the filmmakers out there, because there's a lot of people that I know. Um, I spent about a year in Ghana during COVID as well. And I was part of a program um, called the British Council, this like filmmakers program and met a lot of really great people and so many talented people. And, you know, I have one friend, he's got like five feature films under his belt, which um, you know, even getting distribution for it, putting it on a platform, it's so hard to push it out. But um, so I, it would definitely be great to, to have, you know, that kind of support or something in place because there are so many people with ideas. And I think the disheartening thing is just being able to, um, you know, push your stuff out there. And I think that definitely happens globally for filmmakers, um, just the independent ones, like really just kind of grinding and like spending years working on your craft building and then just feeling as if, you know, your work is unseen and your, your work is undervalued. Um, so I really feel like if that was in place, we could really excite people and people will be so much more infused and motivated to create. And, and Ghana is, is, there's a lot of creatives in Ghana. There's a lot of, um, you know, the landscape is, is bursting even within the art and now obviously film. And I think that it's only a matter of time um, because a lot of people are even coming to only want to create content and the stories are there, you know, the stories are there, the stories are rich and there's so much to tell. So I think that definitely, um, as you mentioned, if we had that kind of support from even the government or that kind of fund, it would be great to push it out there. Um, and recently Kwame and I, the short film that um, he wrote called Locked In that I directed, um, we both produced it together and um, we were able to get a distribution deal uh, two years later, the one that was shot in Ghana. And so um, we're looking forward to seeing it on the new year on a streaming platform. And that is kind of like the stepping stone to, to hopefully open up the channel so we can really push out content, uh, not just from us, but from the people we work with, from the, the people that uh, we know um, that we develop these relationships with, because so many people, as I said, have content. So yes, definitely, I, I agree with that. <laughs>
I, the word I was looking for was arts and culture, culture yeah. and arts. You know that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I, I yeah. think you should write some strong letters to them to see whether <laughs> there'll be somebody. Or you have to start. You know, if you get into a cry, you have to go to the offices and see who's there to help because. We need, you know, Nigeria, people know about their film. South Africa is doing really well in the film world as well. It's also on Netflix. It's also it's also on um, Prime. I mean, yeah. there, there yeah. are some, you know, and it's all arts and culture. So I think we should get involved if we want to showcase ourselves, yeah. especially if you're doing the films in Ghana, you're filming in Ghana, Ghana should get involved to help you to come up. But yeah, I mean, ind independent people can also help. And that's the whole idea of bringing you out here so that people can know what you're doing. Because the other thing is, you may be in, it could be a niche at the moment. And it could be, as you said, because I remember even when you had, I did, I didn't, I couldn't attend. I mean, your mom invited me and all of this. Yeah. But September, that was my birthday around the time that you did it. So I couldn't make it. However, I do know that um, um, there were some Nigerian filmmakers who were also attending and were interested to see what Johnny was about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't spoken to them since, so I don't know what the whole idea was. And today I sent messages to say, oh, can you tell me something about it? But I didn't get anybody, you know, so maybe they'll call me tomorrow, but by then we've had to say <laughs> <thank> you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but seriously, I mean, it's very important that, you know, people know what you're doing, not people in the field, but others, because the interesting yeah. thing is there are lots of people who invest in things that you wouldn't yeah. know that you know there may be an oil yeah. person who's sitting there fiddling his thumbs and think oh this is interesting maybe i should invest in you know that sort of thing hmm? yeah yeah no i definitely agree with you I, I think that's why i need to be a bit more um vocal when it comes to just you know coming yes. on platforms such as yours that you invited me on today which i'm very grateful for um to just kind of push out the word because uh, it's important and I think um, one of my friends said to me you don't you know show your face enough <laughs> you need to speak about those things and you know just make people know people people a few people are watching today live but people will watch continue people my people who are watching whenever you watch this know it this is my niece she's trying trying for Ghana she's trying to do her best this is an artistic person this is somebody who has loved for the arts and culture of black people. It can be black people in the diaspora, black people in Africa, black people in our beloved Ghana. We need to help each other. So this is it. I am i don't want to take up a lot of your time because I know you were doing something and I, you came on here. So do you have more time or not? Um, I have a few more minutes, yeah. No, you have a few more minutes. Do you want to give us your final, you know, you know, how would you like to connect in, with Ghana, you know, in this, what, 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 how do you see yourself doing something mm -hmm. with Ghana, in Ghana to, to include Ghana? It's not, yeah. it shouldn't be that you are going, taking the people, using them for the, um, whatever it is that you do, and then you take it out, the, the mm -hmm. film, out of Ghana, yeah. we don't hear about it again. How do you yeah. plan to connect with Ghana on, on this? That's a very great question. Um, so yeah, there's a few ways. So I think uh, number one is definitely um, anyone that's a part of the productions we do, like uh, locked in, everyone was like based in Ghana. Everyone, you know, there's it's easy to kind of outsource sometimes and people bring people in and whatever, and that's fine. But like, you know, when we've done productions there, it's people, it, on the, on in Ghana, like essentially there, um, ready and using utilizing the skills and also being able to continue to push out content. Um, recently, I um, basically became co CEO of a platform called African Movie Box um, AMB, and essentially that is a database which we're launching in January, which is going to put all information to do with African movies from from Africa, from the diaspora, etc. Anyone that is with, within the African bracket, we will have content um 
you know, the, the name of the films that they might be pushing out or the series, etc., will have a database of that information. So quite like IMDb does, um, but this is going to be just based on Africans and we want to really like hone in on being able to, to push out the content that we continue to do. And so we think this database is important because we don't have data, you know, we lose data, even, you know, stats to do with movies, um, investment money, how much did it cost to do this? You know, all those information, we, it just kind of gets lost. Um, and so with African Movie Box, uh, which is the platform that I'm now part of as well, um, founder is Patrick. And so, this platform will allow us to continue to build and then eventually it can, you know, showcase more, showcase more emerging artists, um, showcase people that want to like highlight the short film of the day, highlight the independent film of the day. And so that, um, you know, especially with people investing into a platform like that and, you know, sharing, um, uh, registering, that will continue to build a database where we have, you know, more, more, um, more visuals. Uh, we have more, um, how do I say it? be able to you know, shine a light on all of the talent that we have um, rather than focusing too much on other platforms. And then, you know, who knows what, what that will become in the future, you know, maybe the next streaming platform. But for now, what we're doing is just collecting the data and showing the information to make people aware of what's going on, where is it being shot, who's a part of this um, 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 production. And I think that will help uh, people to even contact others that they want for their productions. Like, oh, hey, have you seen that on um, African Movie Box? It has this person over here who's shooting this movie next year, let's, let's contact them and hit them up because that's exactly what I do when I use um, a platform such as IMDb. I, I will look up the directors, look up the producers, look up the actors, what are they working on? Who can I connect with? Who can I network with? And so that is what the platform aims to do as well. And that's another way. Um, we have a mixer on the 23rd of December, which I'll obviously be at as well in Ghana, just to highlight that as well and just to, to introduce people to African movie box. But um, I think in terms of just continuing to, to build. Um, Kwame also had a plan that he had put together, you know, as part of Johnny to just continue to um, educate and teach, you know, um, people about like global filmmaking and international filmmaking. And so um, when I arrive um, next week, um, we're gonna be doing a seminar workshop with, about um, basically with, you know, students at University of Ghana speaking about acting, speaking about directing, producing, and just kind of like the experiences that I've had living in the UK, in the USA, um, with, in Ghana as well, and just how I've been able to maneuver that. Um, and same with um, Kwame, how he's been able to have a sold out play. He's had um, um, a really popular book called The Novelist on Amazon, an e um, a book, an audio book essentially. And that is taken to a different level as well. And then he has all the um, other things he's produced alongside um, Johnny as well. So it's just really been able to, to you know, give the students that kind of knowledge. Um, so at University of Ghana and Unimac will be doing a workshop as well, just to kind of share that. And recently, um, last month in the UK was Black History Month. Um, so I was in a few universities in the UK, also going around sharing my experiences as a black woman, as a filmmaker, um, spending time in um, the different places and how I kind of maneuvered it. And so many people were interested about finding out. So with Ghana, how did you do that? How were you able to maneuver and like, you know, um, asking so many questions about Ghana? And it was, I, I didn't realize so many people would ask a lot of questions when it came to that, but they were so interested by how I was able to just navigate through um, um, those different places and they wanted to find out more about, you know, how can you do that as a filmmaker? How can you just have that international presence? How can you uh, link with people if you want to create in a country you've never shot in before? So um, we want to kind of pass on all the knowledge that we have to students um, and that's what's going to keep us evolving and that's what's going to keep you know, the growth in the industry within Ghana, within Africa, because we're, we're passing on that knowledge and hoping that, you know, they can carry it out as well um, with more of the resources coming our way, such as funding and distribution platforms. So, so yeah, so there's various ways. And I think that was a really, um, really, really good question because it, I don't think a lot of people don't realize how much goes into, you know, some of the things that you're doing they just think oh you just make movies but it's like there's there's a lot of there's a thought process behind it and it's not just about you know one movie it's just about it's also about building the, the economy when it comes to the film and the tv market because it's something i've been passionate about for years like it's not just something that's just come to me it's something i was passionate about from when i remember being like 
um, 16, 17, saying I want to go back to Ghana and I want to be able to do film there. Like, I, don't, I don't know where it came from, but it's something I've always wanted to do. So, um, yeah, definitely um, we want to continue doing that and use Johnny as one of the events that's going to literally, um, you know, use as a catalyst to all of the wonderful things that we will continue to do um, over the months to come. So, so yeah. One of the things also that I wanted to ask, to, to, uh, it wasn't a question actually, it's just an opinion that I have about filmmaking. Yeah. Is that what, what I notice is when you watch a film, for example, there's a new film out at the moment, it's supposed to be a horror film. It's on, on, on Netflix. Now people yeah. may think I watch a lot of next week. No, I only do it on the weekends when you Netflix and chill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, but um, the, People are talking about this particular film. I can't remember its name, but it's something like Get. It's not Get Out. It's more um, Leave the World or some or Leave Leave the World Behind or you know something uh, like that. Yeah. Do you know Do you know the film I'm talking about? I because, watched it, but I've heard of I've heard people talking about it. Yeah. I hear it was directed, produced, and directed by Barack Obama, President. X. Wow. President. Yes, yes, wow. yes. And it, it's a kind of a a mind blowing thing, you know, how the whole film of people have got all sorts of different views and opinions. My take on it was this, and I thought of you, I thought of you. And what I thought of was this people, some people make films with messages within the film for the people who are going to watch that film. Mm. Now there are, open films out there and then there are specialist films which are maybe for a particular niche market or or something but then there are films where everyone is interested to watch because there is a message within it yeah people have different ways now there is something there is a, a shift going on at the moment where like you all your friends i know my children, their friends, everybody, the young people, all the people coming from gener Generation X and lower, they want to go to Africa. They want to go back to Africa. They want to live in Africa. They want to do African things. They want to eat African food. This is your time, my girl. Yeah. 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 Definitely. This yeah. is <laughs> your time. <laughs> Then, I'm, not, I'm not joking. This is your time. No, I mean, no, no. every time I see, and you know, people, let me tell you, this girl is so hardworking to the point where when she's not doing a film, she's taking photos at her wedding, a funeral, she's all over the place. She's the, and she is so precise, my people. She is so good. We cannot let our precious people go follow. We need to help our young people coming up with great ideas. Now, this particular interview, in fact, I am humbled that you are on my show and we're having this chat because I kind of feel that 10 years from now, even 15, that a time will come when I will say, I interviewed her. <laughs> I want that time to come quick. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm growing old. I'm growing old. And all my I will look, I do not want you to come in, become big when I am too old to say, yes, yes, <laughs> I want to jump up with my energy and of course my blood. <laughs> so please, I am so happy you came on my show. Thank Kiki you so much. Chat is so proud to have you on. You have a message, you have an art, you have something that you want to give to the world. Now, people, black people, if you know anyone watching this show today, if you know someone who would like to invest, would like to get interested, would like to help, please contact Stephanie. I'm gonna put her details underneath, or Stephanie will, you can do it yourself. Oh, Put it you. under the show and let people know that you're there, you're available, people can contact you. And then we can go, I I hope I will not be using my Zimmer frame. 
I can walk like I'm walking now to go to the cinema and I'll see your name and burst into tears of pride. Oh, amen. That's honestly, yes. That's that is that is the aim and the goal. That is the aim and the goal. Yes. My other message is as people know, this is a show for women by women to women and the world. So here is a woman. Here is a woman with promise. It is not just talk, all my people. This is somebody who knows what she's doing. She's had the experience. She's working on it. She's made films. Now you can go on YouTube. You will see some of her short films. This is not a joke. I'll and put my website here too. Yeah, put your website. Put everything. Put your Instagram uh, address in there as well. Put everything so that people see you. They see what you're. This is a girl. This is she. Here you are. This is Stephanie, my people. I present you with Stephanie. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I, so I, I, it's a pleasure. I want you to come back. And yes, I want no. you to come back. And I, and this time when you're coming back, I want people to see snippets of, because that's what I wanted to do today. But yeah. I just didn't work the thing. And my son who does these things for me hasn't got home yet. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't been able to do it, but please do come so that we can um, you see snippets the next time and know where your progress, where you're at, and all of that. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I it's a pleasure. It. And thank you, listeners. I'm very glad that I had people watching, listening. Forever I am in your debt. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Everyone. You too. Bye.